Hello there. Festival of the Holidays at Epcot is right around the corner, and we still have to share our experience from 2023. Many of these experiences are mainstays of the festival, including the World Showcase Storytellers and the beautiful Candlelight Processional. It is nearly impossible to see everything in one day, but we did our best, and hopefully this video helps you decide what to prioritize on your visit. To begin, we start with a breakfast at Garden Grill as part of the Candlelight Processional Dining Package. So let's join up there. Okay, so our drinks and uh, I guess breakfast appetizers have arrived. <laughs> uh, we got some watermelon and some monkey bread, which is a cinnamon loaf. With a lot of syrup for Becky. <laughs> So on the skillet here, we got some steak with ranchero sauce. We got bacon. We got some potato hash brown casserole thing. We got Mickey waffles, and we got lots of eggs. I like his scarf. You want to take this? Oh, it's his collar. Have you been running around in the fields all day? Oh, I, oh, digging. <laughs> we have a dog that digs too. <laughs> You want to get a picture? No, that's Dale. Oh you, you just you what? <laughs> I can't believe I'm sorry for. I was having to call you this morning. I'm sorry, Dale. Yeah. <laughs> get a picture. Cute. Thank you for growing all this food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Hello Chip. How are you? Have you been up to any trouble this morning or have you been getting out of trouble? Maybe a little bit. <laughs> He's got to be good if he wants to get presents this year. That's right. <laughs> We're coming up on Christmas. you got to make it on the nice list. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay, so first off, Garden Grill. I thought it was uh, very good. Thumbs up. Uh, it's a little expensive, but it's a character dining, and it was for the candlelight processional. Um, uh, the food was very good. My favorite was actually the uh, cinnamon pulled apart loaf monkey bread. Yeah, I really liked the steak. It was cooked well, and I liked the ranchero sauce. Yeah. Uh, so it was about after tip, like $75 per person. So it is a little bit of an investment. It's more like expensive than doing a quick service, obviously. But uh, yeah, no, I would recommend it. We're gonna head off to Figment to do Figment ride because we're wearing our Figment Christmas sweaters, which you'll see Figment wear during Journey into Imagination. So there's no indication that there's anything special with this ride from the facade, but he is wearing a festive sweater. Listening with your ears, it's about listening with your imagination. Your ears are hearing a thousand thoughts. Right this way, everybody. What is going on? You're turning this entire open house upside down. Upside down? Now you're talking. That's the best idea you had all day. With just the spark. Figment. Complete. Figment. Wearing same sweatshirt as us. Uh, so now I think we're gonna head into uh, World Showcase. The sun is directly behind the tree right now, so maybe tough to see some of the details. But here's the Epcot tree with an angel holding the world on top. So we're going to pick up a map for Olaf's holiday tradition expedition. And we're gonna be on the search for Olaf and World Showcase. Right at the entrance to World Showcase, they do have a stage out here for Joyful, a celebration of the season with four different show times for today. It's tough because there is so much to do at Festival of the Holidays and so many different entertainment and a lot of the show times overlap. So you really have to pick and choose what you want to accomplish if you're only coming for one day. Uh, if you have a longer trip, I would try making two days for Epcot. Wow, Disney is really getting good with these animatronics. So lifelike. And we found Olaf. So we probably won't show all the Olafs, but here's an example of what you're looking for.
If you know, you know. We are now awaiting Father Christmas in the UK pavilion. And here is the tree. And Father Christmas meets here, right near the back gazebo in the UK pavilion. And do you your wassail too, and God bless you and send you a happy... <laughs> oh, hear ye, hear ye, to all those gathered among the streets of this fair village, greetings! I have been known by many names. There are some who call me Santa Claus. But here in the United Kingdom, I am Father Christmas. And I bid you welcome. We are gathered here today to toll the devil's knell one stroke for every year since the birth of Christ. Now, let's see what I want. 60, 4, 65, 66, 67. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, I seem to have lost my way. <laughs> what is the year, dear? 2023. 2023? Oh my goodness, well, it certainly is right. Yeah, uh, time does fly when one is having a good time. <laughs> well, that's uh, 2023 minus 67. That zones! That means I have to ring this blessed bell another 1,956 times. <laughs> Oh, I say we set this down and pick it up a little later, shall we? <laughs> Indeed. And I've also received letters from you, my friends. And Oh, I received a letter from you, sir. <laughs> You're expecting an awful lot this year, aren't you? <laughs> Always the optimist. <laughs> oh, now, what was this coming from you, sir? Yes! Oh, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> of course I do. I'm Father Christmas after all. Yes. What? You're thinking, enough with the cards and the carols. Tell us about the good stuff. What about the mistletoe? <laughs> There's one in every crowd. Yes, but I can hardly just as Charles Dickens shared the romance of a perfect Victorian Christmas in his writings of a Christmas carol. So have the United Kingdom shared its customs and traditions with the rest of the world. The nights are wholesome. Then no planet strikes, no fairy takes, nor rich hath powers to charm. So hallowed and so gracious is the time. And so, my dear friends, on behalf of all of the villages and towns here in merry old England, here is wishing each and every one of you a very hallowed and gracious holiday season. <laughs> now, before I go, I would like to indulge you upon one final gift. Sing along if you'd like. We wish, wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. <laughs> happy Christmas, everyone! <laughs> so we just saw Father Christmas in England. Yes. Very nice. Very nice. And now we're waiting for Père Noël in France. Not Pierre. Pierre means Peter, as Becky would say. It's Pear. Pear. It's technically Père Noël. Huh? Père Noël. Okay, you French languagist. Linguist. <laughs> languagist. Tells you how much I know. <laughs> You're more French than I am. <laughs> True. Père Noël's backdrop is this gorgeous poinsettia tree. Awaiting Père Noël. I do want to share with you one of my favorite. It's from a lovely little girl named Pepet. She lives with her old Uncle Louis and her brother Francois on a farm near Le Beau in the mountain of Provence. Her letter will give you a little flavor of the holiday season in France. Uh, écoutez, listen. Dear Père Noël, 
Although my big brother Francois says Christmas is for babies. Oh, Francois, no, 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 no. I look forward to La Vie de Petit Jésus and a visit from you. <laughs> of course she does, huh? The watch night, ah, me, this is our Christmas Eve. The watch night is a magical evening when we sit in front of the fire, sipping hot cider, and the uncle Louis tells us the story of the birth of the baby Jésus. Well, she goes on to say her big brother Francois teases her about this. Uh, Francois does not believe in Christmas. He does not believe in Père Noël. But for me, nothing can surpass the magic of Watch Night and the fragile beauty of a child's face on Christmas morning. <laughs> Alors, with Christmas still several days away, Uncle Louis secretly decorates the tree. Francois helps Pepe to set up the crèche. Oh, uh, you know this word, crèche? It is the nativity scene. Oui. One of the most important <laughs> symbols of Christmas to the French, even though it was invented by an Italian, St. Francis <laughs> on the season. You know, he's okay too. <laughs> now, you know the figure they place inside the crèche. Mary and Joseph, three wise men, little drama boy. Well, in Provence, <laughs> where Babette is from, the custom is to also have figure represent people from the village, the baker, the priest, little figures made of clay called Santon, little saints. And Pet wakes up, rubs her eyes, she wakes Francois, she runs to see what I bring, but <laughs> when Francois takes his time, he does not believe in Christmas. He does not believe in Père Noël. But when they get to the tree, they find a big surprise, quelque chose extraordinaire. Not one, not two, three, sans tant. One carved to look like old Uncle Louis, the other like Dante Francois. The third looks just like dear sweet Babette herself. <laughs> when she closes her letter to me by saying, I think Christmas is a very magical time. All I need is a Christmas tree some Santa, and you, Père Noël. <laughs> Love the bed. Oh, isn't that sweet? <laughs> Tell me, do you all believe in Christmas? Yeah. Yes. Ah, do you all believe in Père Noël? Yes. Super. I want you to help me say Merry Christmas in my language, which is Joyeux Noël. Let's try it. Un, deux, trois. Joyeux, Joyeux Noël. Noël. Oh, très bien. <laughs> Music to Père Noël's ears, eh? <laughs> well, Joyeux Noël. A banana. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, everyone. We have made it to the American Adventure. I love this tree. The poinsettia garland is beautiful. And now we're going to go inside to hear the Voices of Liberty. A special holiday performance by the Voices of Liberty. I'm excited. They are. Everything they do is beautiful. <laughs> it's it's honestly like so beautiful and like touching that like it really pulls on your heartstrings and it's very easy. A lot of people get emotional during it.
Just like you might gather around a fireplace, we want you to gather around this red circle. It's where the sound is the best, and anywhere on the floor underneath the dome, you're going to hear a savage more. So if you're on the floor, that's right. Go ahead and scoot up to the edge of that red circle for me. And if you're under the balcony or on the bench, come on in and join us here on the floor. Come on, this space. Just like a little red mud, make sure that's right. <laughs> come on in and have a seat. And if anyone's worried about getting up after the show, we are going to be your token. <laughs> specific merch. This is a pass holder hoodie actually. Full zip. Full zip. They got a tumbler. Spirit jersey. Half Sherpa spirit jersey. Ornament. That's solid. A little blink blink. And then we have this bag. It's a nice bag. It is very cute. A cup perfect for hot cocoa or eggnog. <laughs> and pins. This is the no. pass holder pin. Can you see it? Okay, perfect. Yep. Here's the pass holder pin. Can I do This one's a Visa gift card. Oh, a cookie jar. Okay. And then these are the two not pass holder pins. Very nice. Now it is approaching lunchtime, so we're gonna go ahead to some of the booths to get some food. Yes. First up is Shiwasu at Japan, and I think I'm gonna get everything. <laughs> Maybe I'll have a bite or two. Yeah, I mean, there's the. I mean, we'll show you when we get closer, but I'm interested in all the food items here. So, Becky just about got one of everything from Shiwasu, which is the. Festival of the Holidays booth in Japan. She has a Chris sushi Christmas tree. Gotta get that star up there. A soba noodle soup. And a sweet potato mochi. Yeah. Which is more of a uh, dessert item. And then she also got this boba melt tea. Try the sushi tree first. What is in the sushi? I think it's Like what type of fish? It's like a Okay. I'm gonna be bouncing this whole food review. Very good. And the drizzle on top is spicy. Spicy mayo. Spicy. Next item is the buckwheat soba noodle with I believe this is shrimp tempura. Mm. A nice warm item for this chilly day. Yeah, I might need that. Stay away from my bag. Hey, you. Okay. Shrimp tempura, shrimp tempura. Very like soy sauce reminiscent. 
So it seems like kind of a miss for you. Well, here, I'll say this. If you're not an adventurous eater, it's a safe choice. Yeah. I think sometimes people go to like the Japan and China food and can be a little intimidated. I would say that is a very safe option for someone who's not very adventurous. And we'll do... Try a mochi. Oh, that was quick. I had to go like this. It's a very chewy consistency, but it's sweet but not overly sweet. Very light flavor. Um, someone who, I mean, myself included, I'm kind of over all the sticky sweet stuff this trip. <laughs> yeah, too many cookies. Um, so this is a very nice break. Something sweet, but it's not like Oh, hurting my teeth or upset stomachs. So, if you want something a little break from the sticky sweet, this is great. It looks like it's separating a little bit. Yeah. It's non alcoholic, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's very tart. No, I just wanted to make sure it doesn't taste alcoholic. Okay, I was going to say, unless there is something that they gave you that's. No. You know what it tastes like? <laughs> but I believe the fruit in this is cranberry. Makes sense. So that's Holiday. Why, that's why it's tart as opposed to more of a refreshing note, like if it was a strawberry. I like it. Something different. I got gather around Drumas for sale. Only the finest Drumas for sale. Eat a shy to shy. On New Year's Day, we will fly kites. On New Year's Day, let's spin tops. Please come, please come soon. New Year's Day. Hi, eat a shy to shy. Dumas for sale. Come, come, gather around. Dumas for sale. Only the butt. Yes, you can come closer. Yes, come closer. <laughs> Minasan, that's you. Happy New Year. Or, as the Japanese say, Akemashite omedeito gozaimasu. My name is Sakura. Yes, the old year is gone and it's time to welcome the new year. So even though it's a bit early, I want to wish everyone a happy new year. Happy new year. Thank you, thank you. Akemashite. Akemashite. Omedeito. Omedeito. Gozaimasu. Gozaimasu. Very good. That's the spirit. Irishaimase. Welcome to the Japan Pavilion and our celebration of the traditional Japanese New Year, or Oshogatsu. It lasts from January 1st through January 7th. Today I appear before you as a humble street vendor. But what I have to sell is a very important part of Oshogatsu. And here it is. It's called a Daruma doll. It's rather handsome, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> the Daruma is like a good luck charm. As you can see, it has no pupils in its eyes. The custom among Japanese is to make a wish and paint in the left eye. I made a wish on my own doll. Then, if your wish comes true before the end of the year, you must paint in the other eye. I'm still waiting for my wish to come true. But did you know the legend of the Daruma dates back to the 6th century when a Buddhist monk named Daruma Taishi journeyed from India to China to spread the teachings of Buddha. His journey was difficult and oftentimes the roads that he traveled was plagued with bandits but he had no weapons how could he protect himself the answer was in the teachings of Buddha years later Duma went to a temple at the top of a great mountain where he meditated 
for nine years. Can you imagine remaining motionless for nine years? I can't even stay still for nine minutes. And this, it is said, is why the Daruma is a symbolic reminder for the Japanese of patience and persistence through the ups and downs in life. As we say, Nana Kurobiya Oki, which means literally, knock down seven times, get up eight. You see, it always comes back to the upright position, no matter how hard it's knocked over. Now, New Year's, or Oshogatsu, is a time to get back up, a time for rejuvenation, asking for blessings, and celebrating the coming of spring. Okay, so now we have made it to the Italy Pavilion for La Bifana. Is it La Bifana? La Bifana. Aha. The Christmas witch. I meet with little schools. Excuse, she's a bit fancy, huh? No, 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 Isabel. Is Have you seen any mean witches? Ah, it's different, huh? Good! Isabel, now you can wake up now. Oh, my friends say, no mean witches, huh? Bon Natale! Bon Natale! You know what this means, huh? Merry Christmas. See, are you here to hear my story? Yeah. Oh, you're saluting me already, huh? <laughs> My name is La Befana, and I am a witch! <laughs> but I am a good witch, I am a nice witch. Huh? I wear the scarf over my head, because they mean witches, do you know what they do? They tease me, huh? Nobody likes to be teased, huh? I think they tease me, though, because they are jealous of me. Do you know why? Because I, I, La Befana, am the gift giver here in Italy. It's an important job, huh? If the children are good, I bring the sweets, the treats, the goodies. If you are not so good, what do I bring, huh? Oh. Who said that? Oh, oh you said that? Ah, I recognize you now. <laughs> I kid, I joke, I joke. Now, in America, there is a gift giver, see, huh? He uh, has a beard and he says, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, who is this? Santa Claus, ah, no, I don't want to brag. But I've been bringing the bambini the gifts down the chimney long before old Saint Nick was a bambino himself. <laughs> that just means I'm old, okay. <laughs> Tell me, uh, when does he bring the gifts? What night when you are sleeping? Huh? Christmas Eve, see, Christmas Eve. Well, when does La Befana bring the gifts? Ah, the eve of the epiphany. You're right, yes, January 5th. Why? Everyone say, why la befan? Why la befan? There are many ways to tell my tale, but this is my story. Sand. Camels. No running water, huh? What? About a time over 2,000 years ago, Italia was the center of an empire, <laughs> much bigger than it is today. And Rome reached all the way out to what is now known as the Middle East. Now, I lived in a little cottage at the edge of an old highway where caravans of camels would come by all the time. You don't see camels very often now, do you, huh? No. Maybe some Teslas, but no camels. <laughs> One day, I was sweeping in front of my little house. We did that back then. We swept outside. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I look, huh? I see there are travelers, three of them, coming towards me. They are on camels. And they are so exotic, dressed like kings. But the men, not the camels. <laughs> They pointed this way, they pointed that way, and they are saying so many words La Bafana does not understand, but lucky for me, these men, they talk with their hands, huh? <laughs> this La Bafana understands, and they say a word that I know you will know, Bethlehem. You know the stories, huh? You've heard the stories. And La Bafana, La Bafana, why do you not go to the Bethlehem? Everyone is talking about the baby king, the king that was born in a poor stable, and Bafana, uh, La Befana, they are saying that he is the son of God. Just then, the sky opens up and it is filled with a bright light. So bright La Befana cannot even look. It's as if the sky had burst into glory. And the sound 
Oh, the sound of the angels singing. So many, many, many angels. Oh, so beautiful. Like nothing I had ever heard before. I knew then <clears throat> I must go to the Bethlehem. I am so excited. I will go to the Bethlehem. I will see the little king. So I run outside to follow the star, but oh, it is gone. The, the beautiful star, she is no longer there. La Bafana had waited too long. What would I follow to find the young king? And so, since then, I have been looking for the Gesù Bambino, the Christ child. And on the eve of the Epiphany, that is when the three wise men arrive in the Bethlehem, I climb down the chimneys and I look into the faces of the children. And I think, ah, oh, are you him? Are you the Christ child? And when they are sleeping, you think this could be so, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I do not find the Gesù Bambino. But when I look into the faces of those precious children, it reminds me of the miracle of that star. We are just going to continue to make our way around World Showcase. Our next, like, official plan is to see the Barn Santa at Norway. Um, and then Marcus, that'll probably be around the time he has a virtual queue for Guardians of the Galaxy. And then we'll see what that puts us for time after that. So we do have our candlelight processional reservation for 515. We do want to get there a little bit earlier than that just to make sure we're all set and ready to go. So yeah, like I said, we'll kind of see how things play out after that. China during this time of year also has a small band that plays some traditional music. Um, we are probably not going to see them today. They do also do a um, Chinese lion dancing performance, but on the episode that they weren't performing today, so not sure if they only come certain days or maybe it's just a weekend thing, but um, they are not performing today either. So a little update, I left the Guardians of the Galaxy line and had some technical difficulties and on the way out, I kind of heard that it was down to half capacity. So I was waiting in the atrium and the lightning lane line got really, really long. We have to get in line for Candlelight Processional in like an hour and 15 minutes and I'm definitely not going to have time to do that because I was going to at least wait an hour plus in that line. Um, so I'm going to go catch back up with Becky. Also in the Odyssey Pavilion, which is in between Test Track and Mexico, you can meet Santa. There are a couple different uh, show times for him, so you have to de definitely check the schedule to see when he's going to be out. But yes, you can meet Santa here at Epcot. The sun's behind them, so it's tough to see, but Joyful is out. I think I'm gonna get a little snack before seeing the Santa in Norway. I think I may get this uh, giant tostada. Let's do it. Got the giant tostada without pickled onions. This thing is massive. You can see my hand holding the plate. It's a giant tostada. It was, that, it was more expensive. It was around, I think it was $11.50. So, one of the more expensive food items you can get, but it's massive. Marcus is about to have his Gahungala Wungala Tostada. <laughs> Ooh, that sounded crispy. It's got a nice crispy crunch. Whoa, whoa. So spicy. <laughs> it's so good, he's speechless. Yeah. It, it, it's very good. It's just a little spicy. So if you're spicy first, I would stay away. The tostada is nice and crunchy. It hasn't. It's not flimmy. Like man. the to, like the actual tostada itself is still very crunchy. It's not soggy at all. And the flavors from the black beans and the ground chorizo are really, really good. I don't know what's giving it the kick. I think the tomatillo. Maybe, or the chorizo. But either way, 
Very good. So don't let the mariachi music confuse you. We are in Norway. And we're awaiting the Barn Santa. Hello, everyone! Hello. Hello. <laughs> My, what a fine looking group! <laughs> and you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I suppose I should introduce myself. I am the legendary Barn Santa! Yeah. Here in Norway, they call me Fios Nielsen. <laughs> now, sometimes people can't see me, so they think I don't exist. And I, oh, you can see me, can't you? Yeah. Oh, good, good, yes, I can see you too. <laughs> now, this time of year in Norway, we like to say, Kuyul. So let's all try that together, shall we? On the count of tre. On to tre, Kuyul. Oh, very good. It would be a Kuyul, except every Christmas it's the same. Sigri, who is on her way here now, she doesn't see me because she doesn't believe I exist. <laughs> Say, you wouldn't mind if I use a little magic and mischief to help see me with her story, would you? Huh? Who knows? Maybe this year she just might believe, huh? <laughs> Yo, here she comes. Here she comes. Oh, over here. Well, oh. hello, hello there! Who are you, everyone? Oh, you. Yes, very good. Yes, that that is how you say Merry Christmas in my country. Very, very good. And a Merry Christmas it is. Look at all these lovely decorations. Oh, oh so cute. Oh, hello there. My name is Sigrid, and I am the holiday ambassador for the Norway Pavilion. And I am so excited today to tell all of you about Christmases in Norway. But first, here's a little bit of a Christmas song sung by children of all ages. The Mouse Song, Miss Bisa. Well, there must be a bird. We need the right key. Thank you, Disney. Oh, I love Disney. All right, here we go. When nights are getting longer and lakes will freeze to ice, Mother Mouse went strongly about to foul device. We must avoid the mouse trap, but there is naught to fear. We'll all be celebrating at Christmas time this year. Everyone, hey, son, no come, son, no valor, round, no rise. Yes, a beauty dead in that's galale, some in barica. Hey, son, no come, son, no valor, round, no rise. A beauty dead in that's galale, some in barica. The father now says that it's time to take a nap. Shh, just dream about. You'll tie to knock that awful trap. While Father Mouse is keeping watch, the children try to sleep. They hum some Christmas carols instead of counting sheep. Hey, dee, do, 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 is Yulinesen, and he is like Santa Claus, but he visits the children on Christmas Eve to bring them gifts. And then there's Fjolsnesen, and he lives in the haylofts of our barns. It's not creepy, don't make it creepy. <laughs> <laughs> now it is said that this Fjolsnesen, also called the Barn Santa, is a wonderful, yet strange little elf who, who is the guardian of our animals and our welfare. And most people believe that he looks, you know what, he looks just like this silly looking little stuffed toy right here. Look at him, look at his belly, boop. <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> and it is said, especially at Christmas time, that we must treat this Nessa with respect. For if we don't, he's been known to cause a bit of mischief in one way or another. But I have lived on a farm my entire life. And in all my Christmases, I've never seen this field snares and no! What, what was I saying? Oh, yes, 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 yes. He does not exist. Unless they do exist and are therefore very clever and mischievous indeed. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, well now, uh, Christmas 
in uh, in Norway is uh, is my favorite time of year. Oh yes, yes, yes. We have a festive decorations. Oh, like this over here. And oh, the smell. Mm, yes, the smell of holiday cookies fills the air. Ha ha. Yes, yes. But here's the best part. Ha. Ah, in Norway, we have a three-day celebration. Trulalu. Oh yes, we celebrate with a party. We like to party. We like to party. We like to tulalu. Hereby dub all of you honorary Christmas magic makers for the rest of the day. Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> oh, I'd best get back to the hayloft. Get ready for the big day. No, oh, but before I go, kiddies, friends, remember, uphold the values of Christmas. Be kind, spread joy and cheer. And be good to your barn Santa throughout the new year. Good you! <laughs> so I really you were there the whole time. Oh, yes, the whole time. Oh, you, everyone, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So we have a dining package for the candlelight processional for the 515, and we're waiting near the holiday market beyond the festival, the holiday booth for Japan. So very long way. So the little picnic you get when you are at your dining reservation associated with your processional dining package, you get this. And it's a sticker, but when you're handed it, 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 it looks just looks like, like a ticket. It looks like a ticket, yeah, but it's a sticker. And you put it on. And then um, you're going to line up closer to the Japan side of America as opposed to the Italy side of the Italy is standby. Yeah, Italy is going to be standby. Japan is the dining package reservation. And the theater is already two thirds full of just the dining package. So there's a good chance that not a lot of standby people will be able to come in. And I'm not sure the, the protocol for it. I don't know if they just like cap the line and then you gotta wait for the next showing and you're first in the standby line for the next one or what? We've never done a candlelight processional before. So that's why we did the dining package. of Liberty and the Epcot Candlelight Processional. much for taking time out of your busy, crazy, hectic, running around and standing in lines day to enjoy this uh, amazing feat of no animatronic entertainment. <laughs> Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, 
you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. just occurred and wondered what the future would bring for them. In the stillness of the evening, they watched as Jesus slept, listening for the soft sounds of his breath, for the rustle of hay in the night breeze, hearts swelling with the wonder of all he would become. of P. 
Peace himself was a man, a human being, and he walked through this world in the most human way possible, with love. He didn't have much, but what he did have he shared, and it became plenty. Food, water, shelter, care. He met the world around him with empathy, saw hunger and shared the food from his plate, saw thirst and poured for them from his own cup, saw sickness and offered his time for their healing, soothed them with his human hands. Jesus Christ found it in his earthly heart to give of himself to the people who loved him, and even to the people who betrayed him, to all people. That a baby in a manger could grow up to become a man who taught a world of people what it means to love one another, that's the spirit of this season. And it lives inside each and every one of us. The greatest joy of being human is to love one another. And when we share that love, that is the greatest gift of all. We're now in the land pavilion to do living with the land. They put Christmas lights all around in the greenhouses and I hope it looks very pretty. Scientists from Epcot and the U.S. Department of Agriculture illuminate the wondrous gifts we receive from the land. Join us as we ring in the most bountiful time of the year. But one of the most important holiday crops actually grows in the tropics. For centuries, farmers in Central America have cultivated cacao to make them. In parts of southern Italy, family and friends gather once a year to celebrate La Vigilia with a seven-course seafood dinner. Tilapia, bass, and shrimp just some of the dishes served during this grand meal. Today, in the United States, the tradition is known as the Feast of the Seven Fishes. Citrus, like the oranges grown here, are common in Florida, but in Northern Europe, where fresh fruit is rare in winter, they're much harder to find, making them an extra special stocking stuffer. During Chinese New Year, these vibrant fruits are given as gifts of good fortune. Using innovative farming techniques, By recycling water, we can give plants rich nutrients. By giving plants ladybugs, we're able to control pests and reduce the need for pesticides. And by growing ground... With these gifts, our plants can grow an abundance of festive vegetables. 
This greenhouse alone grows a bountiful 15 tons of produce each year. When we give more, we receive more, making the most of the land's green gifts. Other spices, like ginger and vanilla, add flavor to a variety of holiday cookies, cakes, and other delights. By cultivating these festive plants with care and good cheer, Epcot scientists are able to celebrate the holiday. That is going to do it from Epcot's Festival of the Holidays. We accomplished a lot in one day, but there is even more to discover that we just didn't have time for. If you liked this vlog, please give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to see more holiday content coming soon. And until next time, bye!